All right, welcome back. While we were on break, I was standing way in the back of the room at the donut table, and I think it was a smart whoever put the donut table out the, uh, way in the back, because typically a uh, fat guy like me doesn't want to exercise to have to walk all the way back there to get a donut. So good move on your part. Uh, but I had a gentleman that came up to me and said, hey, man, uh, that last section that we talked about, you actually were all over the board, and now I'm confused. And I immediately replied, well, thank you for the compliment. I'm not sure. So, yes, um, I, let me address that again. Yes, I was all over the board because those strategies can be used in multiple properties by the same investor. So don't ever think that when I said typically they're only worried about uh, their niche market and their strategy. Each property could, an investor could say, yeah, I, I'll fix and flip this one, but this one I'm really going to hold because it's in a better part of the city and I think I can rent it. Uh, and I do property management, and I know how to do the rehab portion. So, yeah, you're right. I was all over the board. I apologize for that. So now let's talk about eight factors that will influence the investor's decision and what you need to know about these factors for your client. So the first one, obviously, is the location. And the old adage about location, location, location. Actually, let me give you a new adage because I changed this. Um, I like to say location, location, and financing. Because there's not a property in the United States that I would not own given the right financing or price. All right? So I always say location, location, and financing. Um, Location tends to be one of the most important factors in profitability and real estate investing. And there are plenty of people that I have conversations with when they're talking about, well, there's a home for sale down in one of the war zones and it's only $3,000. Uh, I want to buy that and I'm going to fix and flip. Okay. It, really? Is that what you want? Because while it seems like it's a good price, what are the odds that you're going to be able to resell it at a later date? Um, so I tell people all the time, tell investors, buy more than you want to spend or spend more than you want to buy it for. And what I mean by that is, would you rather buy a house for three grand in, down in a war zone or would you rather spend 50 grand and maybe buy a house in the suburbs? Yes, it's what, 15 times the price? But what are the odds that you'll get your money back? Pro probably greater in the suburbs than maybe in the war zone. So location, location, location is important. It is going to determine the profitability, not necessarily just the cost. Valuation is important in financing. It's important in the listing process. It's an important in the investment analysis. Uh, insurance, taxes, all of these things depend on the valuation. And we're going to talk about this term here uh, in a couple slides. You're going to see after repaired value, the ARV. That is going to be a, an important factor that you guys need to understand because that is going to be what the value is going to be after they, your investor does rehab. All right. So valuation is an important factor that will influence what's the end value going to be on the property. What's the purpose of this investment property? Because if the purpose of your investor is not clear, that could lead them to unexpected results, including and up to financial issues. So this is what I was just, guess I was just trying to talk about last section when I said it may be part of your job to talk an investor out of a potential investment property. If you're a uh, fix and flip on a single family home and your investor comes to you and says, I found a warehouse that's very cheap, I want to buy it. There are terms in the investment world called clear height span, 
called Beam With? Is it a drive up dock? Is it a pull up dock? Is it a drive through dock? These are all things that he might need to know that maybe make that warehouse a bad choice as an investment because it didn't fit his purpose or his overall goal and clarity for his strategies. So you need to know what those factors are so that you can help clarify to him Dude, I really don't think that's a good one. Um, but, you know, if you want me to go look, I'll go pull it up and we'll talk about it. Just understand that may not fit in your wheelhouse. Cash flow is another factor. If they are the buy and hold type of strategy, cash flow is going to be a uh, king. And I've told you once before, cash flow is king, not necessarily capital. Specifically, if they're the buy and hold type of prop. Uh, person. Okay. There are a lot of people. I, I had a friend of mine that got into a deal and he was, it was called no money down, no money down. He bought a single family home, no money down, leveraged it 100%. His cash flow was like a hundred dollars a month. And he kept saying, but I, I I'm into it for no money. And I kept saying, yes, one water heater issue and you wiped out prof your profits for an entire year. So cash flow is going to be a factor that they're going to want to think about. Leverage. Now leverage is a very fa fancy word for debt to income, their debt ratio, whatever you want to look at. The mortgage, loan to value. In the residential world, we always talk about 80% loan to value. In the commercial or in the investment world, they like the word leverage. Yes, loans are good, loans are convenient, but sometimes if you're committing future income to cover a highly leveraged property, that is an issue. And I just explained an example of that. You could get in very highly leveraged, i.e. low equity, low down payment, or no down payment, but yet it affects your cash flow, and then all of a sudden you have an issue, and now you have an issue. All right. Potentially, maybe even a foreclosure issue. You know, if your property is highly leveraged and you have a huge uh, capital expense something, I, you know, water heater, furnace, all of that goes out in one fell swoop, all the stars aligned and all of that goes out. And now you've got a $20,000 uh, outlay of cap capital to fix that. You may have just eaten a 12 months, 14 months, 20 months of cash flow because your leverage was too high. New and existing properties, that could actually be an issue. I put this one in here. There are investors that actually buy new homes. New, ho new construction usually has attractive pricing. They have a lot of options to customize it, which is going to lead to higher rents, and they have more modern amenities, all right? Now, there are problems with new construction investment, just like there is with new construction purchase. You've got risk delays, you've got increased costs, you've got unknown stuff like neighbors, neighborhoods, HOAs, things of that nature. So just keep that in mind if your client wants to buy new home. I, I had an investor that bought five brand new homes. He would buy model homes. Now, they were existing, but I called them new because no one lived into it, lived in them. And that was his business model. He liked to buy the last home in a new subdivision and he would go in and negotiate prices with builders uh, with my help to buy the, the, the model home. So management is a factor. Maybe they don't want to be a manager. Maybe they don't know how to be a manager. So the fact that they're looking at a buy and hold strategy, uh, once again, you may have to intercede and help could pose an opportunity for you, keep that in mind, so that you can say, 
hey, if management's an issue and it's a factor on why we're not looking at this property, perhaps you need to let me manage the property and now you can take advantage of this low cost house or low valued house and we can move forward with a, this strategy on that particular property. And obviously, what's the market? That's a big factor. What's the market currently? Is it really a buyer's market? Is it a seller's market? Is the interest rates low, which typically means rentals are low as well. If interest rates are lower or low-ish, easier to get money, there are a lot of first-time home buyers. And if you don't know, go back and listen to my class I taught earlier about first-time home buyers. Uh, Typically, they are in the biggest group of buyers right now because interest rates are low. Well, that typically means the rental market is going to go down because a lot of those people are now buying uh, new homes. And I mean new as in existing as well. It's new to them. So the market may be an important factor on what drives your investor. So what we've talked about are eight uh, factors that influence their decision. It could be a combination of any of these eight. It could be all eight. It could be one or two of the eight. And for the gentleman that gave me a hard time about being all over the place, I'm going to do it again. Just because we've distinguished them individually as eight separate factors doesn't mean that they won't play together. And obviously, we already talked about leverage and cash flow tend to run together. The higher the leverage, the lower the cash flow. And if they're a cash flow person, they want to try and not leverage as uh, much as possible. The market could influence cash flow. Markets could influence uh, other things. Management might enter, uh, enter into cash flow. Hey, dude, I'm making good money, but if I have to pay a manager to manage, I'm going to eat up uh, enough of it that it is substantial. So management the factor of management could also affect the cash flow. So yeah, David, they're all over the market again. I'm just trying to give you the insight so that you understand that these are what really are the factors behind their incentives to invest in property. All right.